Hi everyone, Vivek here from Byte Academy. So today we have organized the event uh, to build, just a minute. Sorry for that disturbance. Yeah, um, so we have organized an event to build a simple battleship game with Python. So if you have minimum knowledge on Python with Python library called random, then you can easily go ahead and learn this uh, or work on this particular game and you can build it yourself and also you can enhance it yourself. Yeah. So this is a good game to begin with to practice Python. Okay. So whenever uh, you are into it, whenever you are into gaming and whenever you are into coding um, it's a nice mix of when you're learning python it's gonna be connected so you can just start with building of building your first game and go ahead and work with python in a much better way okay so what is battleship so before coming into the game or before i show the demo of how the game starts with or how the game works and also seeing into the code we just we have to understand a few concepts that is the library called random okay so we have the import uh, random library here so i have imported la random library from python okay somebody is here Oh, uh, great. So for the people who have joined now, um, just a minute. Yeah. So for the people uh, who have joined now, let me give a brief introduction. I'm Vivek. I work at Byte Academy as a full stack instructor. So today we will be uh, executing a game called Battleship on Python. So if you have minimum knowledge on Python, you can go ahead and easily learn it and implement it yourself, or you can also enhance it into much better way. Okay. So just follow my lead in order to understand the game and build your awesome first game. So first of all, um, you have to know this particular commands or particular inbuilt functions in Python before getting inside the game. Okay. Before showing you the demo of the game, I have to explain you this library called random and one of the function from it called random. So let's go ahead and learn that. So we have import random, random dot randint one comma two. So randint is a function from the random library, uh, library which is inbuilt inside Python, which gives a random number between a range given range. Okay. So if I give one to five, one comma five, it will give a random number between those two numbers. Yeah, you can see every time I execute my code, it will just give me a random number. Yeah, so it will be in the range between one to five itself. So whatever number you give, it will be the random number will be given in this particular range itself. Yeah, so for the newcomers, uh, I'm, I'm using uh, one of the ID called Jupyter Notebook. You can go ahead and use it uh, if you are a beginner. Okay, that's a good uh, platform to learn code while coding uh, into uh, when you have uh, much more uh, codes, when you have multiple codes, you can put it in each cell and run it there itself and it will give the output at the below uh, cell itself. Yeah, so this is a complete uh, platform where you can just write the code there itself and write multiple code uh, there itself in each of the cell and you can execute there itself without any terminal without the requirement of terminal okay so if you go in the advanced level of python you have to learn vs code uh, you have to use um, text editors like vs code or pycharm ids like pycharm or something like that but as a beginner i would recommend you to stick with jupyter notebook yeah so we have a random library here. Uh, yeah, one of the function we learned is a rand int. So it gives an integer number between the given range. Okay, whenever you run that cell, you get a random value between the range of one to five. Okay, if you give one to hundred, it will be in that range. So you can see 39, yeah, 46, 87, yeah. 
uh, then also we have one more uh, function from the random library called random itself okay random dot random yeah so it directly gives a float number uh, it generates a random float number between 0 to 1.0 okay so it randomly generates a random value in the range of 0 to 1.0 okay it is a float value always float value is nothing but a decimal number so you can see random dot random uh, we get all the numbers all the random numbers between uh, 0 to 1.0 that is always always it will be a floating value yeah so these are the two important functions you have to remember for this game yeah so if you know this uh, functions then you are good to go in order to learn uh, this game uh, provided you have basic knowledge on python like we know for loop you know how to uh, declare a variable how to print things how to take an input from the user so if you know this basic things you are gonna uh, crack this particular logic and you can uh, you can build this game as well yeah. So now, as we have learned the library which we are using or um, which we are importantly using on this particular game that is random, we will next go ahead and see the demo of the game. Yeah. So it's a terminal game as it is a basic level uh, program or a basic level game which we are building. We have not uh, given any front end for it or a user interface for it. It's a terminal game. So whenever I run the program, I'll get things inside the terminal. I will be using the terminal in order to give the inputs and take the inputs from the program. So you can see, enter your name. First of all, uh, when I run the code, it will say, enter your name. I have to give my username. My name is Vivek, so I would give that. Then it will give me a board yeah something like this let's start the game so the game the logic behind the game is nothing but building or uh, finding a battleship okay so this is a board and we have to guess a correct row and column in order to uh, find the battleship okay so this is the board we have four into four board yeah so we have four columns and four rows in this particular board we have to guess the correct value or correct row and um, column value in order to find the correct battleship okay we doesn't get any clue or we do, don't get any uh, uh, type of uh, logic into it we just have to guess a, a grid where the battleship has been hidden if you guess it correct you you are one you have one and if you guess it wrong you lose Okay, so the thing is that the particular game ranges from zero to three. Okay, the board, uh, the column value and row value will be in the range from zero to three. Okay, let's say I want to guess this. Okay, the first one. So I have to, they are asking for me to enter the row number. So my row number will be zero. Okay, because that's the first one. Yeah, that is in the uh, zeroth row then I would go ahead and guess the column as well so it is also in the zeroth column if you can see the row is this one and column is this one okay that's the basic thing you would know so this is row and this is column so if I want to guess the first one the first uh, grid I have to put zero and zero you can see it says you missed the battleship and it gives Oh, just a minute. It is in the reverse direction. Why is it in the reverse direction? Uh, if I your turn. And if I give one and one. Okay, let's try. And two and two comes here. One, two, three, four. Okay, it's in the range of one to four. Okay. So if I just say four and four, you have guessed that already. Okay, understood. 
So uh, it's in the range of one to four. Uh, I had been mistaken. So it's not in the range of zero to four, three. It's in the range of one to four. So we have to maintain that range. So you can see when I gave one and one, it will be at the first position. Okay. So what first row and first column. So this is the point I am guessing. Okay. Uh, it said you missed the battleship. Yeah. So that is not the correct one because that's not where the battleship has been hidden. So that's not the correct particular guess, okay? So then I guessed it as two and two. And if you see, I get an X mark there, okay? I have guessed it already. So I get an X mark there, yeah? Then we have the enter uh, row two, sorry, enter the row, I have given two, enter the column, I have given two. So that is nothing but second row, Okay, see this is second row and second column is this particular grid. Yeah, So you have to just uh, guess the grid where the battleship has hidden. If that battleship is hidden there, then it will be like X and X. If it's not there, it's it will not be there. Okay, so X and X here. Yeah, so you can see you missed the battleship here as well. I missed the battleship. Yeah. So we would not know until we win that particular or we guess that particular battleship right. Okay. So I if I write three and three here, you can see. Yeah, you can see you sunk the first battleship. I didn't know it was in three. It was just my guess that uh, it, it may be in three and three. So yes, it has been there. So if I guess it correctly, I get an asterisk symbol or this uh, star symbol here, whatever you are seeing. Uh, if I guess it wrong, it will give the X symbol. So you can see, I get a congratulations message saying you sunk the first battleship. Yeah. So you can go on guessing. Um, I have given number of rounds. So until that number of rounds, you can go on guessing. So I have given 10, um, rounds here or 10 guesses for a user so till that 10 rounds has been done or 10 turns has been done for the user they can they can go on guessing it okay you can control how many uh, guesses you want to give to the user okay so that's the battleship i want to explain to you okay this is the game this is the overview of the game uh, this is how it works let's go ahead and see the code which we have built in order to make this work I hope you understood the game. Yeah. So this is the board uh, we are giving to the user. They will be guessing the grids. If the things are in the grid, it will be. Uh, if the if the correct grid has been guessed, it will say you sunk the battleship. If the correct grid has not been uh, guessed, it will just say you missed the battleship. Okay. And wherever the things has been already taken or already guessed there they will just put the x symbol and wherever correct hidden ship has been guessed they will put the asterisk symbol okay. so i have given 10 chances you can control the chances given to the user to guess the right ship hope you understood this is all about the battleship how it goes along okay coming to the building of the game I have, uh, in order to explain you guys, in order to uh, come one by one, I have really divided it into uh, three parts. First is the setting the board uh, and then hiding the battleship, then playing the game. Okay. So I have segregated the code into uh, three different sectors, so which we can learn systematically without any confusions. So, first of all, I have imported the Library, as I told you, I have used the random library inside this particular game in order to give a random uh, value for hiding the ship. So I have given that. Okay. Now, first of all, setting up the board. So let's go ahead and set up the board in this particular code. Yeah. In order to set the board like this, I have taken a empty array. Board is equal to empty list. Yeah, you would know uh, what a list is in Python, right? So you have to uh, know that in order to understand this game, okay? So it's a collective data type in Python, that is list, which we are using in order to build a board, okay? So board is equal to this particular 
empty array. Then I have taken one number called RC number is equal to four, uh, where I can control the number of grids I want. So it's a four into four board. So I have put four numbers of rows and columns. Okay. So if I want more, I can change it here. So if I want five into five board, I can always go ahead and change it. If I want 10 into 10 board, I can always put 10 here. So it will be in that range. Yeah. Then going forward, building up the game or building up the board. So I have used for loop for X in range zero to RC number. So for X in range zero to RC number, X in range means um, X will be starting with zero at every iteration, it will be increased by one and the ending point will be RC number. So if RC number is four, it will stop till three. So in the first iteration of for loop, X will be zero. In the second iteration, it will be one. In the third iteration, two. In the fourth iteration, it will be three. So it stops till three because it is beginning from zero. It will stop till three and it will end before one number given the end number, okay? So inside the for loop, I have appended board dot append. So board is an empty list, right? So I'm appending something inside that particular board. Yeah. So board dot append this O, whatever I have written the O as a string into RC number like this. Okay. Into RC number means that thing, but the four. So I'm just inside the board i am just creating an array at every instance like this it will create yeah so it will create a array like this at every iteration Okay, so in the first iteration, this will be created. In the second iteration, the same thing again, it will be created. Likewise, it will be creating four such arrays inside the board list. Okay, um, don't mistake me. I call list as array sometimes. So if I say it as array, consider it as a list. Okay, so zero, 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 then zero, zero. Um, again, I have put the same thing. I have used O there. Okay. So at every iteration, I'm building this. Okay. Yeah. At every iteration, this will be created. In the second iteration, this will be created. In the third iteration, this will be created. If you want to see it, you can see it. You can see. Just a minute. Okay, let me restart the kernel because I was running the other program there and I yeah, intermediated it. Okay, now you can see I have run the board or here. Yeah, you can see this has been built from this for loop. Okay, so for x in range zero to RC number, board dot append zero into RC number. So in the first iteration of the for loop, this particular array will be created zero into RC number, that is four times. Okay, then in the second iteration, this array will be created. So till the for loop, for loop runs, this particular whole array will be created. Yeah, so there's a list and there's a multiple list inside the list, okay? So there's another multiple uh, list inside this. So we have a overall lift called, uh, list called board and we have multiple lists inside that. So first list, second list, third list and fourth list, yeah? So we have created the board like this. Then we will be going ahead and putting that in the format in this particular manner. Yeah, so I have used one more function called print board, okay? So define print board of board. It is taking the board array inside it, if you see. Yeah? Then for row in board, I'm just looping through that array 
and writing it in this way print empty string or yeah, um, I'm just giving a gap in between them and putting a dot join dot join what it will do it will join all the arrays together sorry oh, all the um, elements of an array together and it will print like this okay so this function is converting this particular whole array into this format okay so we will take first of all we'll use the for loop in order to put all, everything in this particular format then i have a print board function which will convert this whole thing into this format okay my first thing it will be over my first uh, milestone is completed that is building a board okay setting up a board yeah so this is the board i am showing to the user or i am displaying in front of the user so whenever you run the program or you run the game you will be seeing this particular board where the ships has been hidden okay my next milestone will be hiding the ships inside it okay how to hide the ship inside this particular board so for that i have used two function that is random row and random column okay so this is a function i am using define random row of board return random dot rand range zero to len of board okay so we learned about the rand range, uh, rand range function in the uh, previous thing right so what was rand range giving oh sorry we didn't learn about rand range so rand range what it gives is just give me a minute yes so rand range is same as rand int itself so it will if you give the range in that range it will provide the random number okay so i have given the start point of that range as 3 and end point as 100 in between this particular range i'll get a random value whenever i run this program so print random dot rand range so 3 to 100 so i would get a random value between in that in that particular range yeah so here return random dot rand range zero to len of board what is len of board len of board is nothing but four right so from zero to four i'll get a random value okay zero will be considered but not the four uh, which is here okay it will not be considered then uh, in the same way random call return random dot rand range zero to len of board so it's a square uh, board right four into four board yeah so len of board will be same in the horizontal direction as well as the column direction so when i call this particular function it will give a random value for me in that particular range that is zero to four okay now i have defined the function but now, now i have not called it yet okay so you already know how to call a function right you should know that in order to understand this program okay so this is the definition of the function but i have to call, call the function there so ship row one i am taking a new variable called ship row one and i am taking another variable called ship column one in order to hide the particular battleship okay so in ship row one i am calling the function random row so random row of board yeah so random row of board when i pass it it will hide the ship in that particular board in that particular value okay so it will generate a random value from zero to four in that particular coordinates that particular uh, ship will be hide it okay so ship column one the same thing i have done for the same so random column of board so when i do that i'll get a coordinate that is zero on one one and zero in order to look into it right so if i hide it if if the game if the battleship is hided in this particular coordinate the coordinate will be zero and 
one. Yeah, see it is in the zeroth row and first column. Yeah, if I hide it here, it will be in zero and two grid. Yeah, so it is in the zeroth row and two column. Yeah, if I hide it here, it will be in the zeroth row and fourth column. Sorry, third column. Okay, so if I hide it here, it will be one and one. Okay, because it's in the first row and first column. Yeah, so that's how we hide it. So ship row one and ship column one is where the battleship has been hide it. Okay. So in our game, we have to guess two battleships or we have to find out two battleships. So two battleships will be hidden inside the board and we have to find those um, two battleships in the given number of turns. Okay. Now we have the coordinates for the first ship. Okay. Next, we have to have a coordinates for the second ship, right? Yeah. So for the second ship, I can go ahead and write it in this particular manner. Yeah. Ship row two and ship column two. This is the coordinates of the second ship and it is calling the same thing. Random row board, random call of board. Yeah. So ship row two and ship column two will be the coordinates of second ship. Ship row one and ship column one will be the coordinates of the first ship. Okay. But if I give it something like this, will it not uh, conflict between the two? Yeah. So this may generate the same value. We doesn't know, right? It's random. It's always random. Yeah. Uh, this may both the ship. There may be chances where both the ships will be hided in the inside the same coordinates. Yeah. So this may be zero and zero, and this may also be zero and zero. We should not let that happen, right? We should always avoid the conflict between the two ships. Yeah. So we use while loop in order to avoid the two battleship appear at the same position. We should never let in our game, uh, both the ship to be appeared in the same coordinates. Yeah. So in order to avoid that, what I'm doing is, first of all, I'm equating the same coordinates of ship one to ship two. Okay. So same coordinates of ship one, I'm uh, equating to ship two. So ship row two and ship column two is equal to ship row one and ship column one. So ship row two takes the respective ship row one and ship column two takes the respective ship column one. Yeah, the same coordinates I'm equating to the ship row two and ship row column two. Okay, now when I myself have equated it as the same i can go ahead and write a condition in order to change it right so while ship row 2 is equal to ship row 1 ship row 2 is equal to random row board so i'm writing a condition inside the while loop whenever this particular two are equal change it yeah give a different value to this understood then there will be no chance of conflicting between the two ships yeah. So I'm equating it myself and changing, writing a condition to change it. So that will never have a conflict in my game, right? So if I just write like this, there may be conflict at some point of time. So both the ships may be hidden at the same place. So in order to avoid that, I myself am equating the same coordinates of ship one to ship two, then I'm changing it using the while loop. Okay. So whenever this particular thing happens, I'm giving a random row yeah so this random this particular random value will change until then the while loop runs yeah so uh, when i get the different coordinates the while loop stops and i'll be having a different coordinates for the ship two and i'll be having a different coordinates for the ship one yeah so now i have successfully hit the both of the ships inside the board in two different positions not conflicting between the two Okay. Now, first of all, I'll take some input from the user that is uh, print, let's play battleship, then player one, I'm creating a 
variable here in order to take an input from the user. So player one is equal to input, enter your name. Yeah. Then we have print player one, get ready. So I'm just sending a message to the player to get ready to play the game. Okay. So here the in the input tag, that particular player will be entering his credentials or the or his name in order to play. Okay. So this is another part. Finally, let's come to the main logic of the game. That is how this particular game uh, will be played or build a logic in order to make the user play this game. Okay. So playing the game. First of all, we have hit count is equal to zero. Yeah. So first of all, hit count is equal to zero. I have put, why is this hit count return or why is it used? I'll tell at the later point of time. Okay. Then I'm building the whole logic inside the for loop. Okay. The whole logic of the game inside the for loop. Why is that? Make, because in order to control the number of turns given to the user. So if I write the range in 10, it will be uh, 10 chances will be given to the user in order to write it. If I write it as five, the five chances will be given to the user in order to guess the battleship. Okay. Right now I have put as 10. Uh, you can change it or you can control it at any point of time. Okay. Then we have the guess row and guess column. Yeah. So we have the guess row and guess column. So first of all, I'm taking an input from the user in order to guess the correct coordinates. So I am storing it in a variable called guess row and guess column. So we can see int of input guess row allowed values is zero to four. Yeah, zero to four or zero to three. So somebody is here or one to three or one to four. So the allowed uh, thing will be allowed values will be one to four. So they can guess the battleship between one to four. Okay, guess row will be uh, one input, guess column will be another input and it will be stored. And it uh, this particular values I'm seeing or I'm checking if the battleship is in that particular position or not, okay. Now I'm writing different if and else condition in order to check if the if the user has correct uh, correctly guessed the, their answer or that particular battleship is in the right guess whatever the user has guessed it and is it, it is it sorry is it in the right position or it, is it in a different position I have to check that and give a right message or return a right message to the user. So if guess row less than zero or guess row greater than RC number minus one or guess row lesser than zero or guess column greater than RC number minus one, oops, that's not even in the ocean. First of all, when the user gives the answer, I have to check if that particular value is inside the coordinates or is inside the allowed values or not. What if user gives zero? What if user gives six? what if user guesses it as 100 i have to give a right message to the user that you should not do this right so i'm checking if the user the given answer by the user is in the right range or not or is in the right values or not okay so that's what i'm checking guess row is the user guessed row and here also if it's lesser than zero or if it's greater than uh, rc number minus one then i have to put a message saying oops that's not even in the ocean okay that means we are finding a battleship right we are building an analogy that uh, that board is a battleship and if they guess it outside it's not an ocean okay we are just saying that it's not a ocean no? then LF bold guess row or guess column is equal to is equal to star. You guessed that one already. So if it's already star, 
yeah what if the user has gone to the second position and giving the same answer yeah so if he is giving the same row and same column so i am checking if it's star or uh, x mark you i have to say you guessed that one already okay i have to give a right message saying you cannot guess the already guessed answer once again okay so star means i am checking if that particular answer has been already guessed or not elif guess row is equal to is equal to ship row 1 what is our ship row 1 ship row 1 is where we have hidden our ship right so you can see ship row 1 and ship column 1 is the coordinates of the first ship and ship row 2 ship column 2 is the coordinates of the second ship yeah so i am checking if they have given the correct answer so guess row is equal to ship row 1 and i have used the and operator here because this and this should be equal in order for this condition to be true okay so guess row is equal to ship row 1 guess column is equal to ship column 1 or okay either they may have guessed the first ship or second ship okay so you can see guess row is equal to is equal to ship row 2 guess column is equal to is equal to ship column yeah so either of them they would have guessed so i have to check that okay so if they have guessed the right ship i have to give the message or first of all i am incrementing the hit count hit count is nothing but a points structure we are using for the game so we are maintaining some points we have two ships right so if they guess both of the ships then their points will be two otherwise if they guess only one ship their point will be one so hit count is equal to head count plus one yeah so i am just incrementing that one then I, am, I have to change that particular thing in the board to asterisk symbol right if you remember when i guessed it right it changed to asterisk symbol yeah so it said you sunk the first battleship and it changed the board uh, that particular coordinate into asterisk symbol before yeah so i am changing it here uh, bold guess row guess column is equal to asterisk symbol yeah then if hit count is equal to is equal to one i have to check uh, the hit count in order to give the right message so if hit count is equal to is equal to one print you sunk the first battleship lf hit count is equal to is equal to two you sunk the second battleship okay so both the battleship i'm checking and i'm giving the right message so whichever battleship they have guessed i'm checking that particular hit count number then i'm giving the right message there yeah print board of pro break okay so you have to take a look into this code in order for you to understand it okay then if board of guess row and guess column is equal to is equal to x you guess that one already so i'm also checking if that particular uh, thing is already guessed okay or otherwise i have to give a message you missed a battleship if they have given this is the lost resort so if they have not uh, given the right answer i have to print it as you missed my battleship board of guess row guess column is equal to x yeah so i have to give you missed my battleship board guess row and guess column is equal to x yeah so i'm changing if that particular answer is wrong i have to uh, put it as x mark yeah when i put it as x mark it will be uh, seen on the board as a wrong answer and we will we will know the ship is not there we won't repeat that coordinates again okay then i'm incrementing the turn turn plus one and this is your turn okay if hit count finally after the game has been evolved i'll just write to write this condition say uh, checking the hit count so hit count is equal to after the whole turn has been over okay after the for, for loop stops after um, the user has given all the turns yeah or used up all his 10 turns i'll be writing this condition saying if hit count is equal to is equal to two print congratulations player one you win okay otherwise 
else print sorry player one you lose you just have to uh, maintain that conditions so if that hit count or if they have guessed both of the ships i'll be giving the message you won or if they have only guessed one i'll just say sorry you lose okay then i'll just print the coordinates where the ships has been hidden okay so this is the whole logic of the game um you will not be able to understand right now you have to look into the code in order to understand it okay so if you want the code uh, join our uh, nestria uh, channel join our Nestria, nestria channel on discord i'll be sharing the code with you uh, you can take a look okay so yes um finally let's play it one more time so i'll be uh, giving only four chances this time yeah so i'll be writing vivek as my name let's go ahead and guess one and four so it says no you are you missed the battleship then i would say sorry uh two and three it is no you missed the battleship i would say four and two no i again missed the battleship i got the last chance four comma four i'll do nope this is not there i lose okay it will give i lose i have not put the same code here so if i just put this yeah so i can if, if i play it now i'll get all these messages okay you can try it yourself so this is the whole battleship game i wanted to share with you uh, you can convert it convert this particular game into a double player so i have given the code for that as well i'll be sharing this file on the discord uh, nestria channel if you want it you can collect it from there yeah so that's great any doubts any questions please come to our nestria community uh, which is hosted on um, discord so please uh, feel free to ask any questions whichever you have we can always uh, gather up and clear it we can discuss about it or we can share you uh, additional resources in order to understand it hope you understood the whole uh, logical part of the game if you have any doubts, please join our Nestria community in order to uh, discuss about the doubts in order to get additional information, get access to free events like this in the future or something like that. Okay? So it's on Discord and it says it is Nestria. Uh, it's called the Nestria uh, channel. You can search for it and you can just go ahead and do that. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, download uh, Discord and search for Nestria community. So just get inside it and take more resource about this. Hope you understood the game. So this was the event. Uh, we built a simple battleship game throughout the uh, event. Hope you got the concept. So stay tuned for our next upcoming events on uh, machine learning web3 and much more if you want more information so please join nestria community and we will gather up more information for you and we will provide it for you so thank you have a great rest of today let's meet some other time thank you